Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So today we've got a big exciting project to do. Uh, we're going to make elemental bromine. Not only are we going to make bromine, but we're also going to do it in a way that no one has done yet on YouTube. So we're not just going to be copying like, you know, Nile Red or anyone else who's making bromine on YouTube these days. And this method that we're going to use to generate our uh, elemental bromine is the electrolysis, like everything else on this channel, of sodium bromide. It's a little bit more complicated than just electrolyzing a solution of sodium bromide, uh, but we'll get to that uh, in a minute. Now the chemicals we're going to need for this method are pretty minimal. For starters, we need a source of bromine, so sodium bromide or even Potassium bromide will work exceptionally well. I uh, bought this on eBay. It's finally come so I can make the video now. The next thing we need uh, is not strictly necessary. Or well, I mean it is. It's a safety precaution. Sodium metabisulfite. If we make up a solution of this, uh, you know, if we spill any bromine or if we have any elemental bromine waste, if we have a solution of this, this will do a really good job of neutralizing the elemental bromine just back into harmless bromide ions uh, so really this is just like a neutralizing agent the final chemical we need is uh, sulfuric acid if you can get it uh, I can't really get it anywhere at least not in concentrated form so what I'm going to use as a substitute is uh, sodium bisulfate uh, which will work just fine for this kind of synthesis and that's all we need as far as chemicals go so you know, it should be relatively straightforward the actual mechanism of the reaction is pretty simple in theory. If we make up a solution of sodium bromide and then electrolyze it with I don't know, a cell like this, the carbon anode and a copper cathode, what we should generate is elemental bromine on the anode because the bromide ions are oxidized to bromine. That's the easiest reaction to occur on the anode. And then on the cathode, we'll be generating hydrogen gas from water because that's the easiest reaction to occur on the cathode. In practice, however, what ends up happening if you do that is uh, in addition to the hydrogen that's generated on the cathode, you also end up generating hydroxide ions, which go on to react with the elemental bromine formed on the anode and end up just converting that bromine into bromate or the bromate ion, which I don't know, maybe you would actually want to make uh, at some point, but that's not our goal today. Our goal today is to make elemental bromine simply because it's a cool element. Now in order to stop us from just making sodium bromate uh, instead of bromine, uh, what we can do is hinder the production of hydroxide ions on the cathode. This is really easy. All we need to do is to our solution of sodium bromide add an acid. Not just any acid really. Um, you've got to choose one that's somewhat electrochemically inert. Uh, sulfuric acid is really good for this, as is sodium bisulfate, if that's easier to get hold of. So in theory, if we make up a solution of sodium bromide and sodium bisulfate, and then electrolyze it, what we should get as a product of the anode is elemental bromine, which is what we're gonna be trying to do today. The next thing we need is the actual electrolysis cell. Uh, I'm just gonna be using a glass beaker, 250 milliliters, uh, and then we also need our electrodes. Now the cathode, that's nice and easy. Copper wire is definitely the best uh, cathode you can have for this. I mean, I guess you could use other metals, but copper wire is nice and easy to get hold of, and it shouldn't uh, corrode or anything in the conditions of the cell. Now the anode, however, is much trickier. Um, there are only two anodes that I know of that'll actually work flawlessly for this. Um, those are graphite, which I've got here. Just got four graphite rods, which I've kind of strapped together in one big anode rod, and pure platinum. So if you have platinum wire or a rod of platinum, uh, that will work as an anode. Generating bromine is particularly harsh on most anodes, like even metallic gold or even platinum on titanium. That won't work because titanium won't stand up to the conditions of the cell and neither will gold so as far as I know it's just just graphite and platinum pure platinum that is 
Then finally, we want something to power the cell. I've got my good old uh, PC power supply I put in a box uh, to generate 12 volts, 5 volts, whatever we need. And in addition to this, uh, we're going to need something to control the amount of current that we're putting into the cell so we know just how much charge we're actually using. Um, for that, I've just got this DC-DC buck converter, which has uh, an adjustable current, so that'll work nicely. If you have like a current controlled power supply, for starters, just use that. It's much easier. And with that, I believe we're ready to go. It's probably a good idea to make up our neutralizing agent first. So, just got this 500 milliliter beaker. So I've just added some amount of sodium metabisulfite. Hopefully that should be good as our neutralizing solution for later. Now next, I've got our 250ml beaker uh, for the electrolysis cell and I've measured out about 48 grams of our sodium bromide. By my calculations, this should be enough if our yield is 100% to generate um, about 12 milliliters of elemental bromine. So we'll just go ahead and add that straight in. What we also need is a stoichiometric equivalent of sodium bisulfate. Uh, same number of moles of sodium bisulfate as we put in uh, sodium bromide to begin with. So for me that's about 56 grams. Got a little bit of excess in here and we'll slowly add that in. So we'll leave that to dissolve and uh, set up the power supply and everything. Now that I've set up the power, we've got our PC power supply, 12 volts going into our buck converter, and then currently it's set to 2 volts, which is coming out. Uh, I've got the cathode ready here, and all of the sodium bromide and sodium bisulfate have finished dissolving, so we'll put our solution into our electrolysis chamber to contain any spills. And we'll stick in the cathode, which we want to try our best to keep the cathode as close to the surface as possible, so that because the bromine is going to sink to the bottom, we don't want the uh, the cathode to you know, reduce the bromine back into bromide ions. So we want to keep it near the surface, away from the bromine. And then, as soon as we put in our anode and connect it up to the power supply, we should start generating bromine. All right, and we are ready. Let's connect it up. Yeah, we're getting some hydrogen bubbles on the copper. And hopefully, in just a sec, we'll see some red bromine forming on the anode. You can't quite see on camera, maybe if I zoom in, but just on the edge that graphite anode you can see just a bit of yellow coloring which is looking very promising. Right, I've turned the current limiting up to about half an amp and we're going to be running this for maybe about 24 hours. Uh, in theory that should convert all of the bromide into bromine in that amount of time if our current is 100% efficient which it probably isn't but you know I don't need the full 12 milliliters of bromine anyway so just see how it goes and you can really see a color change now I mean especially if we look at it from the side you can see down the bottom there it's turning very yellow pretty soon that should become quite red what we actually uh, generate first isn't elemental bromine it's actually um, the tribromide ion which is similar to bromine but you know, it's not it's not quite there once the cell runs for long enough though uh, we will definitely start to generate some elemental bromine in the bottom of the beaker. Another really good sign that we are actually making bromine is uh, the fact that there are no bubbles being generated on the anode because in normal water electrolysis you'd expect oxygen to form on the anode but you know, in this case we're generating bromine so there are no bubbles forming. After nearly an hour you can really see that bromine colour start to form down the bottom. Uh, it's kind of smelling a little bit like chlorine now uh, as you'd expect bromine vapors to do, so I've turned the little fan on because um, all of the bromine vapors are much heavier than air and they should settle at the bottom of this uh, box, which we don't really want, so I've turned this fan on just to spit all of those 
vapors out the side uh, hopefully it does actually start generating some actual bromine soon rather than just you know the, the orange color of the tribromide arm but uh, get back to you in a bit and we'll see how it goes uh, one other thing to note at this stage is the fact that the graphite electrodes really seem to be holding up really well uh, I was expecting them to kind of fall apart even just a little bit by this stage but as you can see they pretty much untouched so far. We'll see how well they hold up uh, for the rest of the run, but hopefully uh, they'll do a good job. We are now three hours in. Uh, you can see the color is a very nice orangey red. They've done pretty well in that respect, but uh, there's no elemental bromine that I can see yet on the bottom of the beaker. Uh, and it's probably just due to the fact that we're running it at such a low current that after three hours really not much has happened. We've just oxidized a small portion of those bromide ions into uh, tribromide. Uh, hopefully we're not getting too much back reduction on the cathode, but you know, we'll see. We are generating hydrogen on the cathode, so that's all good. We must be oxidizing something and not just reducing it back. Anyway, the synthesis is meant to take 24 hours at 100% uh, current efficiency. So you know, maybe we'll have to leave this for two days before we actually see any significant quantities of bromine. Okay, we'll leave it and see. Alrighty, it has been close to nine hours since we started the electrolysis. And while we've developed a lovely red color in the solution there, that's a whole bunch of tribromide, uh, haven't seen any bromine form whatsoever so I think this is due to the fact that the back reduction on the cathode of the uh, the tribromide back to regular bromide is just happening at too fast a rate for any elemental bromine to form uh, there are two ways to fix that one is to uh, limit the area of the cathode so that's less of surface area in order for the tribromide to react on the cathode and the other one is to increase the voltage of the cell increasing the voltage of the cell uh, just makes sure that there's a higher potential on the cathode and so seeing as the cathode is the negative electrode and tribromide ions are negative ions they'll repel each other to a greater extent and slow down uh, the reaction between them so what i think i'm going to do is increase the voltage i think that's the easiest thing to do so i'll go over here and fix this up so that we get one amp instead of half an amp. So now that that's done, we have a whole amp flowing through the cell, which hopefully will generate our bromine at a quick enough rate for some elemental bromine to actually settle at the bottom of the cell. Anyway, we'll leave this as is. I'll come back and check on it in the next couple of hours and then you know we'll leave it overnight and see if in the morning uh, we've amassed any elemental bromine in the beaker. 25 hours it's now been since we started uh, the electrolysis and uh, like I said before I was gonna leave it at one amp overnight. Uh, I didn't actually want to do that in the end so I turned it back to uh, half an amp just because one amp seemed to be like kind of spraying mist everywhere and it wasn't really good for the inside of the box or the fan or anything. Anyway, this morning I came out and nothing much had happened. There was still no bromine in the bottom of the cell. So I turned up the current, you can see, uh, I've turned it up to one point, well, I did turn it up to 1.2 amps. It's gone down to 1.15 now, but that's pretty similar. Now that increase in current up to 1.2 amps has done wonders for our bromine production. Uh, obviously half an amp just wasn't enough to actually sustain the uh, the generation of elemental bromine, but 1.2 amps for my particular setup did it very well. So I'll open this up and uh, we'll just take out the electrodes and show you that we do actually have bromine in the bottom. You can see uh, we've got a whole bunch of kind of red staining around the box, but that's to be expected. We are working with bromine. I've gone ahead and taken the cell out uh, just to show you that down the bottom we have 
running around a whole bunch of elemental bromine which has formed just in the last couple of hours since I turned the current up. Clearly a uh, kind of high current density for the electrodes uh, for this synthesis is actually essential for the production of elemental bromine but you know that's very cool. Well I'm very happy this has worked. See we got down there might even be a few milliliters of bromine. Finally something new we do on this channel has actually worked. Something that's never been done on YouTube before. Anyway, I'm going to leave this going till maybe the afternoon. Maybe I'll even increase the current a bit because as you can see the cathode really isn't bubbling very much. Not as much as it was before and we are pumping quite a bit of current through there so obviously as the more bromine we generate uh, the more likely uh, back reduction uh, is to occur on the cathode so once again the way to fix that is to increase the current it's not good for the graphite anode but I mean we want as much bromine as possible from the cell so go ahead so yep now that I've increased the current to about 1.9 amps I think we'll just let this go for the rest of the afternoon and then hopefully later today we'll, we'll have a quantity of bromine that we can be proud of making. It's now 4.30, so that's 16 and a half hours since we started electrolyzing uh, this solution. And you can see even at two amps that we're running it now, uh, the hydrogen production on the cathode is pretty minimal compared to what it was before. Uh, so obviously, you know, the, the less hydrogen we're making, the less bromine we're making because uh, the less hydrogen we're making, the more of the bromine we're just turning back into bromide. Uh, so I think we can end the synthesis here. I think we've got enough bromine down the bottom of the beaker now uh, for us to separate that off and store. Now I reckon when I take the electrode out, you'll see a whole bunch of bromine vapor. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. Can I try to wash off any bromine there? Man, and there we go. Now that I've cleared everything kind of away from the central area of the bench, we can have a look at everything uh, from the cell. Let's see here the cathode. It's kind of blackened, but you know, it looks all right. It's the cathode, so it's fine. Uh, you can see the insulation of the wire has kind of uh, eroded due to I don't know, probably the bromine vapors. Uh, we can see the anode as well has done pretty well considering that it's you know, making elemental bromine. Uh, you can see um, normally as an anode, right, carbon will just fall apart kind of like this. This was used as a, uh, an anode to generate oxygen. But when generating bromine you can see that the anode kind of more flakes and becomes really brittle. Uh, Nerd Rage actually showed this in one of his videos, I think it was making sulfuric acid by the electrobromine process, which is essentially the same as what we're doing here, except we're not using the bromine to try to make sulfuric acid. But yeah, now you can really see just how flaky that carbon on the anode gets during the generation of bromine. We ended up with quite a bit of bromine, really. Look at all that in the bottom. Uh, well, all that's left to do is just I'll pipette that out. I've got a glass pipette for this very purpose because plastic pipettes would just fall apart on contact with bromine. So we're going to have to use a glass one and then I'll go ahead and put it into a flask that we can stopper and then maybe tomorrow I might even ampule it in some test tubes. And just before we do that I think I'll grab a tiny little bit of our bromine and we'll drop a bit into our neutralizing solution just to see what it does. See right on the bottom just some specks of liquid bromine right there. If we swirl this round, they should disappear pretty soon. And there we have it, that is our elemental bromine really should get a smaller flask but I don't really have any right now. I've got a stopper on it. Hopefully this will last till tomorrow. 
it should last 24 hours in a container like this but for long-term storage uh, you definitely need some kind of ampule uh, which I might have a go at making tomorrow. Now to start with the cleanup I'm going to rinse these uh, electrodes in the uh, neutralizing solution should get rid of any bromine kind of compounds that are still on the electrodes. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer most of our cell solution into another beaker leaving behind all the solids and all of the bromine drops that got left behind. So good thing we're in a well ventilated area. And with everything else neutralized what we can actually do with our leftover uh, cell solution is we can set up for a distillation and what that will actually give us is a solution of hydrobromic acid. The hydrobromic acid might be useful uh, for future runs of making bromine because essentially what we're doing is just electrolyzing hydrobromic acid to make bromine uh, or it might be useful for something else, I don't know. Heating the solution also serves to get rid of uh, any uh, aqueous bromine too. And with that all ready to go, uh, we'll heat up our boiling flask and distill the hydrobromic acid. For starters, all that comes over is uh, the bromine vapour from the aqueous bromine. Uh, there's probably quite a bit of it, so what I've just done is position the uh, neutralising solution just below where all that gas comes out, just so we're not letting all that bromine go into the atmosphere. Turns out we're actually making quite a bit of bromine like this as well, so you know I might actually, for starters, uh, put the distillate straight into our collection of bromine. Well I guess that's how we get the rest of the bromine yield out. We just uh, distill the solution, turn it into bromine. I think it's just about done. You can see it's getting quite a bit clearer over here. We just want to get the last little bits of bromine uh, over and into our flask that actually contains our uh, bromine from before. And there the last of the bromine is coming through, so I think now we've got the maximum yield of our bromine out of our synthesis. So anyway, while we weren't able to recover any of the hydrobromic acid, uh, we did get that extra yield of bromine. I mean the yield's still pretty terrible, but I'm very very happy with this little bit of bromine despite that low yield because uh, our method, our new method, uh, actually worked in generating a small quantity of elemental bromine. There are other electrochemical ways of making bromine of course. I think most people uh, tend to just electrolyze a regular solution of sodium bromide to make sodium bromate and then use sulfuric acid in order to turn that back into elemental bromine. And then I think there's one video at least of someone using like a split cell, so like with a salt bridge, uh, just electrolyzing straight um, solution of sodium bromide. That works really well too, uh, and I was actually going to have a go at that, but you know it just takes so long. Salt bridge electrolysis, I mean it would take me like a week to make this much bromine I reckon. So anyway, I ended up choosing this method simply because it was nice and quick. I mean we made this bromine in about a day. And I mean, while the yield isn't great, as I've said before, you know, it works and I only want like a tiny sample of bromine. I'm not using it for anything, but I'm proud of the bromine, proud of the method working. Okay. Very nice. Well, that's about it, I guess. I'll probably have a go at ampulling this tomorrow. So who knows, maybe I'll make a video on that too. Probably not, but we'll see. Anyway, till then, see you later.